Okay, let's take a look at the normal distribution. This is a, a particular model for a random variable that occurs uh, uh, or utilized quite frequently in engineering calculations. Um, so I think it's worth spending a few minutes here as background uh, on this particular distribution type. Okay, so this normal distribution is also called a Gaussian distribution after Carl Friedrich Gauss, who uh, um, is associated with its early history. Um, interesting historical artifact. This is a, a photograph of the German Deutschmark um, before uh, the Germans converted to the Euro. And uh, it's Carl Friedrich Gauss on the picture, as well as uh, if you look in the middle here, there's a, um, I'll zoom in here a little bit on the left, there's actually a picture of the Gaussian distribution on, the, on their currency with this equation for the probability density function of the normal distribution. Um, so uh, I think it's the uh, only uh, random variable distribution that I'm aware of that's made its uh, way onto currency, uh, indicating its value or its ubiquity. Okay, so this dis distribution is also a, has this kind of classic bell shape to it. Uh, there's another plot of it over here on the lower right. And the, the basic form of the equation is that the probability density function is as e to the minus x squared. And there's just a couple of constants, this k and the c constant in here to uh, uh, normalize things out. Okay, this thing is defined from negative infinity to infinity, although it tends to take values um, with high probability close to the, the mean. Uh, we'll look at that a little bit later. Okay. If we want to plug in for those constants c and k and, and kind of normalize things in a convenient way, the equation gets a little bit more um, elaborate. So there's this uh, 1 over 2 pi to kind of normalize things out. And then the sigma x and the mu x are the mean and standard deviation of the random variable that kind of show up as uh, normalizing parameters. Um, but in the end, we've got this kind of e to the minus 1 half x squared as, the, as a basic functional form. That's the interesting thing to look at. Okay, um, uh, let's look at the standard normal random variable. So this is a, a normally distributed random variable that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So we call that a standard random variable when that's the case, and this is also normal. Um, so in that case, if we back up a slide, the, the standard deviation terms of one are gonna disappear. The mean value of zero is gonna disappear when we're subtracting zero. So that equation will simplify down to uh, one over two pi e to the minus one half u squared. All right, so that, and that's a common enough uh, uh, probability density function, it gets its own uh, notation as well, lowercase phi of u. And then the cumulative distribution function for a standard normal random variable would just be the integral of that PDF from negative infinity up to some value of u. There's no analytical solution for this, unfortunately. So we can't just give an equation for the CDF, um, which would be very nice considering how, how common it is. Um, but what we do do is give it a, this a standard notation, uh, capital phi of u, and that's going to be this uh, standard normal distribution CDF that we'll utilize. Um, uh, we can note this uh, thing, is, this distribution is symmetric and it's mean zero, so the um, phi of negative u is going to be equal to one minus phi of u. You can kind of see that by the equal areas in that uh, diagram to the right. Okay, so even though there's no analytical solution, uh, the symmetry and the standardization kind of gives us a couple outlets. Um, so one is to use this uh, a table of the standard normal cumulative distribution function. So I've got a little snapshot of it here on the right. Uh, if you're a student in my class, you'll also have a, a paper copy of this thing or an electronic copy of this. Um, so we tabulate up the cumulative distribution function for um, the standard normal distribution. And I'll, I'll show you how to use it in just a second, but we've got basically u values, the first digit uh, indicating down the rows and the second digit of u indicating across the columns. And we can come in here at say 0 0.53 would be this case here. So 0 0.5, let me label that a little more carefully. 0 0.5 and then 0 0.03 would give me a, a u value of 0 0.53 and the probability of u being less than 0 0.53 is 0 0.719. Uh, so that's kind of the old traditional way of finding these things. Um, if you ever happen to be in front of a computer, which most of us are most of the time, um, almost any software package will give this to you as well. Um, in Microsoft Excel, you can use norm.s.dist and plug in the u value and then, and then enter true to indicate that you want a CDF. If you type in false, you'll get a PDF value. In MATLAB, you can use the function norm cdf and plug in the value u. Both of those will also give you out the same numbers as are tabulated here. Okay, so that works if you've got a standard normal random variable with a mean zero and a standard deviation of one. Most of the time, that's not what we're dealing with. Um, but if you've got a non-standard random variable x, you can first standardize it. Um, you can take x, subtract its mean, so then the, the difference of those two will have a mean zero, and then divide by the standard deviation, that'll make the uh, random variable have a standard deviation of one. 
and it'll still be normally distributed, so you'll end up with a, a U, which is standard normal. And that means with that kind of trick that you can compute probabilities for X pretty easily. So if I want to know the probability that X is less than or equal to some number, uh, I can just take the left and the right hand side of this turn, this argument inside the parentheses, subtract the mean, divided by the standard deviation on the left and the right hand side. So on the left hand side now, I've got this term, which is the same thing as up above, that's going to be the standard normal uh, random variable, and on the right hand side is just a number, so it's the probability of a standard normal random variable being less than that number, and then again we can reuse that standard normal CDF notation, capital Phi, and then this is just uh, um, some number that we're going to plug in. Alright, so I can look up that number either in the um, table on the previous slide, or I can uh, enter it into my computer program, right? So I could say uh, the, the P that I'm interested in is NORM CDF, that's my standard normal CDF, and then I can just plug in X minus mu divided by sigma, the, the term in the brackets here on the far right, and that'll give me the probability that I want. Okay, just to show a couple quick calculations with the uh, the table, so if I want to find the probability that U is less than or equal to 0 0.53, and U has a standard normal distribution, Right, that's exactly what we just did uh, a moment ago. 0 0.53 gives me a probability of 0 0.7019. If I want to compute a probability related to an X that has a normal distribution with some mean and standard deviation, uh, and or so let's throw that curveball in there, and then as well, if I want the probability of X being greater than some number instead of less than, I, c I can do a couple manipulations to get myself to an answer pretty quickly. So the probability of X being greater than 1 is equal to 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 1. Uh, we can think all the way back to our complementary events from a few videos ago. Uh, x greater than 1 and x less than or equal to 1 are complementary events, so their probabilities must sum to 1. And then that term, the 1 minus uh, probability of x less than or equal to 1, I can also write that as 1 minus the probability of um, back up here, x, and then we'll subtract the mean value of 1 divide by the standard deviation of 2 being less than or equal to 1 and then we'll do the same operation on the right hand side subtract the mean value of x divide by the standard deviation okay so the left hand side this is now a u x minus its mean divided by its standard deviation is a standard normal random variable so I've got 1 minus phi evaluated at the term on the right hand side which is 0 we can do a couple things here we can go back to our slides and see uh, 0 0.00 gives me a probability of 0 0.5. The other thing we can notice that this was a um, you know, standard normal cumulative distribution function, if, say looking at this figure on, the, on this slide, um, is symmetric about 0, and so the probability of being less than 0 should be ha 1 half, um, just uh, by kind of quick observation. So it's going to be 1 minus a 0 0.5 or 0 0.5. And we can circle back and see, well, if x had a mean value of 1, and it's normally distributed, it's going to be symmetric about 1, so the probability of being greater than 1 should be 0 0.5, as we expected. Okay, if we use those tables and we can find kind of probabilities on, on intervals, we can look up a couple interesting numbers that give us some rules of thumb. So the probability of a standard normal random variable falling between negative 1 and 1 is 0.683, and then here's a visual of the standard normal random variable in the shaded region between negative 1 and 1. Um, so that area is, is a you know, approximately equal to two-thirds. So a standard normal random variable has a two-thirds probability of falling within, you know, negative one and one. If we think about that conversion from the non-standard standard, non -standard normal random variables, um, this also implies that any normal random variable has a two-thirds probability of falling within one standard deviation of the mean. If we go look at negative two to two, we've got uh, approximately... Um, 0.95 probability, so there's a 95% chance that a normal random variable is going to fall within two standard deviations of the mean. And then down below, there's almost a, a certain probability that the random variable is going to fall within, or the realization of a normal random variable is going to fall within three standard deviations of a mean. So these probabilities are decaying very quickly as we move away from the mean, as we see here. Um, and and uh, that's implied if we have a normally distributed random variable. Okay, so that was a very quick peek at a um, normal random variable and a few calculations. Again, there's, you know, this is just one particular uh, equation for a PDF and a CDF. There's nothing uh, 
magical that says we have to use that one all the time or that it's you know, particularly different, but because it arises frequently enough uh, in our uh, engineering calculations, it's worth a few minutes just to take a look at this one in particular.